Hey, what's going on family? It's your coach Steve Bacon and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about the vicious cycle, right? And this is extremely important for you to understand because so many people, I hear so many people come up to me and they say things like, Steve, you know, I just want to focus on changing my thoughts, changing how I think because they think that's what drives their behavior. And that's not actually true. And I'm going to prove that to you in this video. I want you to understand one thing. Your beliefs control your results. See, when I was going through or growing up in personal development, most of the things that I would read or most of the seminars I would go to would always talk about concentrating on your thoughts, concentrating on your thoughts, concentrating on your thoughts. The challenge with that is you cannot control your thoughts. It's impossible to control your thoughts. I want you to picture this. Picture taking a chair, taking it to your local highway and watching the cars go by. Now you notice how random the cars are. You can't control which cars go by. That's the same thing that happens with our thoughts. We have over 50,000 thoughts a day. And if you break that down to by minutes, that's almost 38 thoughts a minute, some conscious and some unconscious but 38 thoughts a minute passing through our brains every single second. Our brain can't handle that much information. So it has to filter. It has to delete the store and generalize all these other different things that it's getting to just concentrate on what you believe to be true. So even though we can't control what cars go by, we can't control which ones we pay attention to. And that's determined by what kind of cars you like. That's determined by, you know, your favorite color. There's so many different factors to go into which cars you pay attention to. So just like with that example, the same goes for your thoughts. You cannot control your thoughts. Thousands of them passing every single second. However, what controls what thoughts you dwell on is your beliefs. Your beliefs control what thoughts you dwell on. As the wave of thoughts are passing by you every single second, your beliefs determine which ones you reach up, grab out of the ether, and dwell on. That thought then leads to an emotion. Most people think that their emotions just happen willy-nilly, and they don't. Your emotions don't, you don't feel an emotion without a thought preceding it first. Even though it, it came like really quick and instant and you feel like the emotion came first, it didn't. The thought did. Emotion can't exist without thought. So if you're feeling angry, it's because there's a thought that's causing you to feel angry. If you're feeling sad, it's because there's a thought that's causing you to feel sad. The process of thinking is just the, the simple process of asking yourself and answering questions. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions you ask yourself. Your emotions then determine what you do, your actions. And then those actions give you a result. And then that result reaffirms whatever it is that you believe. So let me give you a personal example of what I mean. I don't know if it was the last video or the video before that where I talked about my father coming to get me from my grandmother's house, right? And I said that the only way an eight-year-old can really process that, or at least this eight-year-old could, was they don't want me anymore. So I developed a belief over time that the women who love me will leave me. This became my unconscious belief. The women who love me will leave me. Now this isn't something that I'm thinking about consciously. This is something that's happening in the background, that machine, that unconscious mind that we've been talking about. So fast forward, I go to the military, I'm married, basically the first girl who says she loves me. Now, here's the thing. Our relationship was fine all the way up until the point where I proposed and she said she loved me. That's when things started to get a little weird. Because now, all of a sudden, I begin to think she's cheating on me. She's going to leave. And I couldn't understand why I'm having these thoughts. I don't know if you can relate, but I started having these thoughts of, she's cheating on me or she wants to leave that I'm not going to be able to keep her, whatever it is. 
but I am starting to now feel fear. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling jealous. I'm getting emotional because I'm imagining her being with somebody else. I'm imagining her leaving. And growing up where I grew up in Oakland, California, you weren't taught how to deal with your emotions. That's why, unfortunately, like I said, I was physically, mentally, and emotionally abusive to her. I'm not proud of that. I'm just telling my story. Is that okay? These thoughts led to these emotions that I didn't know how to control. And so a lot of times I did what I saw growing up, and I started to redecorate the house, if you know what I mean. A wall over here, a chair over there, glass broken over there, and there's a few times, unfortunately, where I put my hands on her. And then they got to the point where she couldn't take that any, anymore, and rightfully so. And so she left. That was the result. She left. Now, here's the kicker. You ready? You ready for the kicker? I said, see, I knew the woman. I knew women who loved me would leave me. I knew she would leave. Not realizing I was the one causing the entire thing. And I kept repeating that process until I discovered what belief was driving me. Understand that watching this right now, there is a single sentence running your life. A decision that you made a long time ago about you. Like for me, in the love department, the women who love me will leave me. I made that decision way back at 18 years old. But here I am, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, still operating off of this same belief that the women who love me will leave me and wondering why do I keep ending up in bad relationships? It's because my beliefs controlled everything. And so if there's a result in your life that you're getting that you don't want, and no matter what you try, you consistently get the same result, I want you to understand it's a belief. And until you catch that belief, until you figure out what it is and challenge it, change whatever perspective you have on it and create a new meaning about whatever situation caused that belief, like with my mother at eight years old, until you change that, you're going to continue to get the same result over and over again. So today, I'm in a health, healthy, happy, loving relationship with my best friend. Let me tell you how that changed, because here's what I mean about challenge you believe, change your perspective and create a new meaning. Here's what I mean. I was about 30 years old. I'm 35 now, about to turn 36. This situation happened when I was eight. So 22 years go by. And I finally sit down with my mother and I say, mother, why did you give me up? She said, what are you talking about? I said, you gave me up. You and me were best friends. We had it. I mean, you had your issues, but we was good. Why did you let my dad come and get me? She said, boy, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, you dropped me off the night before. He came and picked me up the next day. At least that's the best of my recollection. She said, that's not what happened. I said, what do you mean that's not what happened? She said, that's not what happened. I said, well, what happened then? She said, your daddy showed up with custody papers nobody knew he had. Remember, he wasn't really in your life before that. That's why you didn't remember him. But when he showed up to your grandmother's house that day, he showed up unannounced with custody papers nobody knew he had. I didn't even know there was a custody hearing. That's the reason why your grandmother sat there and watched him take you out because there was nothing she could do. So when I came back to get you the next day, you were gone. And he wouldn't really let me see you after that. And all of a sudden, you ever just hear truth and it sits with your soul? That's what happened with me at 30 years old. I knew my mother was telling the truth because all these different scenarios started playing in my head about when I was a kid. And I just felt sick. Because one, I've treated my mother like less than a human being for 22 years at this point based on a misinterpretation of the past like we talked about in the last video. I lost my best friend for 22 years and 
I ruined every relationship I had after that. Based on a situation that I didn't really know what was going on. One, because I was looking at it from the eyes of a child. And two, because I assigned my own meaning because nobody assigned a meaning for me. Nobody told me what was going on. They left it up to an eight-year-old to decide for himself. Once I understood that my mother didn't leave me that day, this belief changed instantly. From the women who love me to who will leave me to the women who love me won't leave me. Are you understand what I'm saying? Are you getting this? Are you following this? Because this is so important. Because do, would I show up differently if I change the women who love me will leave me to the women who love me won't leave me? Are you, you, you get where I'm going with this? Because now when my fiance tells me she loves me, my automatic thought is she's going to be with me till the end. That gives me happy emotions, which then allows me to what? Pour more into her, which then keeps her around. And then I go, see, the women who love me won't leave me. Are you guys getting this? Are you getting this cycle? This is what they mean by self-fulfilling prophecy. I heard that so many times and never understood what it meant. But I understand what it means now, and I hope you do too. Whatever result you're getting in your life is being driven by a belief. And if you want to figure out what that belief is, if you are tired of living life the way you've been living it and you are ready to step into your greatness, I want you to click the link below and sign up for a free 20 minute discovery session with me so I can show you just how great you actually are. I am so excited and I hope you've been getting value from these from these videos. But I just want you to know, again, there's nothing wrong with you. And I'm trying to prove to you through these series of videos that you can do anything you want to do. There's just some things that you haven't learned about you yet, about being human. And because you haven't learned these things yet, you're judging yourself. So click the link below and let's have a conversation.